All right, into custom packs. And today I'm gonna to be buying a unit for the first time. Even though Unicorn Pack has been out for six or seven weeks at this point, I still have quite a few units that I've never purchased. And um, partly that's because uh, there are just so many. I think there were almost a hundred if you include all the different token pets. And uh, the other reason is that it's pretty strong. And generally I tend to shy away from the strongest units when a pack is first released. But uh, in a second, I'll put the uh, ability up on the screen and we can discuss it in a bit more detail. So we're going to lose here. No big deal. Standard practice in customs. So here it is. Anubis, start a battle, activate tier 2 or lower faint friends front to back. Now it kind of sounds innocuous at first glance, um, but there are a lot of uh, issues with the balance for this ability. First of all, it uh, it's a tier 4 unit, so essentially we're getting old Pteranodon that is not on faint, it's on start of battle, and it's two tiers lower than it used to be. Plus, it's going to activate every faint pet on the team. It says uh, front to back, so that means the one at the very front goes first, and then, you know, if we have Anubis plus four faint pets, they all get activated by the single unit. On top of that, it doesn't actually care what level the pet is. So if you have four faint pets that are all level three, a single Anubis will activate all of them at start of battle. So really it's pretty wild. And uh, as unbalanced as it is, it does make a lot of um, very odd and interesting combos possible, which uh, otherwise would be complete non-starters. So we're gonna start working on one of them now, and that is uh, with this squid, which we bring in having no trumpets on the team. And uh, I wasn't actually sure about um, how some of the attack order was gonna work with Anubis since I never used it. So you could see there me using the Kiwi to give the Anubis a little bit of a, a boost. But actually it wasn't really necessary at all because um, all the start of battle abilities, including the Cherry here, are going to go off before um, any of the feints begin. So even though the uh, squid has higher attack than Anubis, it doesn't make any difference. The cherry is going to go before the squid. So immediately here we get great value out of the ink, removing the garlic so we can get rid of the uh, jellyfish. And then the pangolin, which doesn't have a toy to activate, um, has big enough stats due to the capybaras. So yeah, pangolin and squid were the two faint pets I was most interested in. Probably two of the least seen units in uh, customs. And I'm just looking now for a, a toy pet, but we don't get one. Now, one of the benefits for going for pangolin and uh, squid is that they're lower tier. So we don't actually need to level the Anubis to level three at all. As soon as it gets to level two, it will work on the pangolin as well. And then that's a job done. The build is basically complete and it would just be a case of um, looking for levels and looking for uh, equipment. So we do tie here with this Jersey Devil team. And I'm going to take the level on the pangolin even though we don't have a toy yet. But we do find the stingray here. So we'll take that for the flashlight and then rearrange so that the pangolin gives the stats to the Anubis. And uh, I could have frozen the waffle there, but because I'm looking for the pill for Blobfish, I decided to wait. And you can see it's such an interesting sequence where the the cherries get activated and then um, the, uh, the squid goes afterwards. It's definitely a little bit counterintuitive, but uh, once you get the hang of it, you can really start making some uh, pretty unusual things happen. Now we are going to lose here to this horse parrot team. It's so, it's so funny how, uh, how many uh, horse teams there still are. In, uh, in customs. So I think I'm going to sell the Stingray here because I want to buy sell the Zebra and then maybe just take the Turtle here. I could have, if, if I take the Turtle it will activate at start of battle as well but maybe I'm not going to realize that. Yeah I think I probably um, was greeting a bit too much there. Clearly I wanted to activate the Mammoth as well but we need a level 3 Anubis for that so I'm, I'm realizing eventually that uh, that's not the uh, the best strategy here. So actually our team looks pretty ropey here on turn nine. Uh, level one squid at the front. But actually the two trumpets from the cherry mean that we get two activations from that single level one squid. 
And uh, we actually narrowly missed out on knocking out the uh, camel there with the squid. I think it was a 1 HP um, breakpoint. I could be wrong. But the extra health from the pangolin lets us clean up the backline of their team there. And although ink maybe isn't the strongest of all the uh, ailments, simply removing equipment from the front units is just inherently strong. So I think, am I going to take the kangaroo? Not kangaroo. <laughs> Crocodile here, yes, and I think I am going to level up the, the squid. If we get it to level 2, then we're going to end up inking 4 units for the cost of 2 trumpets, which is extremely nice value, and the timely arrival of the crocodile meant that we could uh, delete one of their jump pets there. So... There's a waffle again, I think I'm going to save that to be able to reactivate the toy, although we do get mongoose instead, so um, we'll go for that, I think. Okay, we're going to take some buffs from Mosasaurus first, and then yeah, we can unfreeze waffle since we uh, have the mongoose ready to go. I think initially I maybe played the first game of this without having enough toy pets, and so I was getting quite late on, rolling for toys and then realizing that I didn't have the toys that I actually needed. That was a ridiculously buffed up team for turn 11 um, with the uh, the buy sell. So Mosasaurus out, Mongoose in, and now we'll take the Coconut I think because we're going to ink the unit at the front so we can basically guarantee that we're going to double hit that unit if not outright KO them uh, due to the, uh, the uh, Coconut. So maybe I shouldn't have sold the crocodile there. I think I was really trying to end up with a team of four faint units, but again, the mammoth can't do anything here because we only have level two Anubis. So amazing value from the ink here. We're going to remove the pepper and the squid manages to KO both their biggest units at the front. We get an extra ink at the end, but it's uh, not really necessary. And then Flying Squirrel, just to keep the coconut alive. Base stats Flying Squirrel on turn 13. And I am going to bring in the Blobfish just to make sure I get the level 3 Pangolin. And I don't think I've ever had a, a level 3 Pangolin win. So we might as well go for it since we're here. I honestly can't remember a, a time when I had a, a Pangolin team in uh, Customs at all. And again, absolutely insane value from the ink. Just completely devastating the front line of that team. So, am I going to bring in the cat or not? Yeah, okay. I think I could have frozen beta fish there. And we actually roll a double beta. And I, I could take them, but I think, am I going to pass it up? Yeah, I do. I guess I just wasn't really thinking about finding um, additional faint pets. Now, this is another situation where the ink is incredible. Removes the... Uh, peanuts that the uh, Toucan had, which would have gone to multiple units on that team. And then we are going to faint and give ink again, although actually it wouldn't really matter too much on the Vulture there. Uh, the Shark's only level 1. So we're now on to 9, with probably the weakest uh, Anubis team you've ever seen on YouTube. A final buff from the Cat to the Anubis. And now we're just looking for another faint pet. And I actually rolled triple beta fish, which is pretty funny. And we're, so we're going to play base stats beta fish, base stats uh, flying squirrel on turn 15 with squid and pangolin as the rest of our team. And we face double behemoth, level 3 monkey, level 3 jellyfish. This person clearly going for the achievement on the, uh, on the sneaky egg. But the coconut results in the... Um, massive stats on the behemoth being completely wasted and we get the pangolin ribbon to boot. So Anubis is definitely way too strong at tier 4 but it does mean that you can create some very very unusual teams and still win.